This is a labor issue of sorts. I mean, it, it, there's no getting around the labor quality of it, but it's a little bit different from most labor strikes. And we are talking, of course, about the Hollywood writers' strike. And here's an interesting article in Rolling Stone, why striking Hollywood writers fear an AI future. The WGA strike is now underway, and a key reason negotiations fell apart is the film and TV industry's refusal to budge on the potential use of AI. All right, so you got a few things going on here. One, um, the the writers have been getting a, a worse and worse deal over the years. It used to be you got hired onto a show, and they would work on the show for nine to even 12 months sometimes. You remember, TV used to do 22 to 26 episodes, would, would have been a season of a show normally. Um, as they moved over to this streaming model, uh, increasingly the, the way that they hire writers now is they hire them for 20 weeks to just write all the scripts for the season. And remember, they're usually not doing... 24 episodes are doing like eight to 10 episodes now, sometimes 13, if you're going by the old HBO model. Um, and then goodbye. Most of the writers are let go once those scripts are in the can and they keep on a skeleton crew for the back and forth. You have to do with costume and sets and actors who don't like their lines. They'll keep on like a small core group, but most of the people in the writer's room are let go after that 20 weeks, which has made it, almost impossible to make a living now for people who are entry level, who are not very established, who are not marquee names in the industry. Um, so this is part of why they're, they're striking. Um, they're trying to put a stop to that. Uh, but also, yes, they are trying to extract a promise from Hollywood that they're not going to replace them with AI. And uh, there are also questions of training AI with their copyrighted material. In other words, uh, you know, when you have to train your replacement, so they're trying to stop them from being able to use their scripts to train the AI to write scripts. Yeah, and the um, studios were not willing to go there. What the studios promised them were annual meetings, keeping them informed yes. on these changes, which is business talk for yeah, we'll, we will replace you with machines if and when we feel it's profitable to, to, to do so. Right, exactly. So, you know, the, the writers are saying, um, you know, this is something that's happening across the economy, that everyone's getting converted to gig work. They're, they're turning Hollywood writers into gig workers. Um, all right, fair enough. And usually... Um, every, everybody knows when due dissidence takes a stand on a uh, on a labor issue that can tilt it one way or the other. So we feel we feel it's important to take a position on this. However, we have some demands of our own that we would like to lay out. Of course, we want to side with labor, but we have certain conditions. OK, so in order for us to support this strike, the showrunners for. The Witcher Blood Origin, She-Hulk, Rings of Power, The Mandalorian, but only season three. John Favreau is okay. Uh, Star Wars episodes seven through nine, because not having Luke Han and Leia in a scene together was screenwriting malpractice, and now we can never do that, ever. Uh, the Writers of Willow, and Mindy Kaling. All of these people must never be allowed to write a teleplay, screenplay, novel. Um, They're allowed to write basic technical writing, perhaps for a catalog, but nothing beyond that. If these demands are met, writers, you have our full support. But even with the massive, massive wave of support that will come with a due dissidence endorsement, I don't know that you're going to be able to beat the AI. The AI is the next logical step in the democratization of media. The process of the internet and social media and YouTube, what has allowed shows like this to flourish 
if you look at what this AI can potentially do, nobody's really thinking about this. It's going to finally completely eliminate the need for Hollywood. Once, once you've completely democratized the technology in an industry, why do you have industry towns? Why do you have concentrations of industry? Because of the bar for entry. Because you need a certain amount of capital, you need a certain amount of equipment. That bar to entry creates an opportunity to monopolize or centralize production, right? Once anybody can put in a prompt on a, on a keyboard, or really, you know, full Star Trek voice recognition. Computer, give me Star Wars in the style of Wes Anderson. Well, I, that's going to make it very difficult to explain why you need Hollywood. So that is not just a random example. Somebody actually did Wes Anderson uh, rebooting Star Wars with AI. And you know what? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's funnier it, than most of what comes out of SNL. It's actually quite good. This is from the Curious Refuge channel. This video went kind of viral. It's up over a million views. So good for him. Go check out the rest of his stuff. We just wanted to give that channel a bit of a shout out because we are going to play this now. For those who are Star Wars fans and Wes Anderson fans, you will get a kick out of this. Galaxy far, far away. Prepare for a reboot like never before. This summer, Wes Anderson brings you a side of the Star Wars universe you've never seen before, the Galactic Menagerie. Join this ragtag crew of unlikely heroes as they navigate the absurdity of the cosmos, challenge the Empire, and redefine what it means to be a rebel. Our mission is simple. We steal the Emperor's artifact, save the galaxy, and maybe find ourselves along the way. For this mission, we'll need lightsaber, blaster, thermal detonator, paper airplanes, spare parts, and R2-D2. With a star-studded ensemble featuring the galaxy's most eccentric cast, the Galactic Menagerie is the most delightfully offbeat Star Wars adventure yet. Starring Timothy Chalamet, Scarlett Johansson, Edward Norton, Bill Murray, Jeff Gold. It's crazy how they get the actors' faces almost exactly right, too. Like, yes. they're almost exactly yes. right. They're not quite right, but they're very William close. Defoe, Adrian Brody, and Owen Wilson. Wow. Coming to theaters this summer, <laughs> May the Force be with you. There you go. And it is May the 4th. It is Star Wars Day. So very happy Star Wars Day for all the geeks out there. Um, yeah, once again, shout out to Curious Refuge. That was uh, well done. Go check out that channel. Link is in the description uh, of this video. But look. Uh, uh, okay, so, without, uh, without AI, do you know what it would have cost to do that bit? Oh, of uh, course. Uh, when was the last time you saw anything that inventive and elaborate on SNL? right? Like they just did this with AI. What are you going to need Hollywood for? And Jesse actually said in the chat, and this was a very good way to put it. You can't replace good writers. I agree with that, but you can replace bad ones. This is an element. So we're going to show this little clip of Adam Conover. Now in the Rolling Stone thing that we got paywalled uh, behind, Conover was heavily quoted and he seems to have kind of put himself out in front. Now, I, I like to show Adam ruins everything. It, it was very good. Um, the blind spot that I think a lot of the writers like Conover are, are, have naturally being writers, they're biased. Most of you guys suck. You don't, Adam. You're good. Most of them suck. So the idea, he's trying to argue, you don't understand. There's so much that a writer does that can't be done by an ai not a bad one not a well bad this one. is where well, this is where the the turning point was and it was really the advent of streaming i think because streaming made entertainment just so accessible to people they can order a movie the way they would order a hamburger at a restaurant right, right? right. they could pick right. exactly what they want and right. it's with them in a minute which is really not I would argue, as a creative myself, it's really not a healthy way to consume art. Like, you're supposed to go to the artist to see right. what they have to right. say. And sometimes you love it, sometimes you don't, and that's fine. But you go to them to say, okay, what do you got? You go to the theater. Let's see what this person has to tell me. You don't order up exactly the product that you want into your 
living room. And once that started happening, the movies themselves started to change. They don't make those. Um, Matt Damon talked about this very, very well on that chicken wing show while he was eating all the spicy wings. He said you used to have mid budget movies made in like the early to mid aughts and things like that. That's when you had all these really wonderful films made for like 40 50 million dollars like all the oscar right, films right. were in that budget all the greatest movies right. were in that budget and he says now you can't get a movie like that anymore now it has to be totally low risk meaning one or two million bucks that they could take a chance hope it wins an oscar or two or it's got to cost 250 million at which point it either makes a billion dollars at the box office or it fails those are the two extremes you have and so there's not a real market for great writing anymore like there just isn't and you started seeing that about 10 years ago and that problem has only gotten worse and worse and worse to the point where there's a handful of writers who are worth listening to but most of them yeah it's just generic crap i mean you could count on two hands the number of movies that are just truly great movies that have come out in the last five or six years i would argue like there okay. have not been five great movie releases per year in the last five or six years. Well, that's true. And, and yeah, I mean, a lot of it is that, you know, once they stop making money off DVDs, they turn to overseas markets. So if you're going to make movies that are going to appeal to China and other people who do not speak English, well, you're probably not going to do complex character driven drama. You're going to do a lot of tentpole superhero sci-fi action movies. You're going to do a lot of John Wick. You're going to do a lot of that kind of thing that can translate to anybody. I mean, I actually, I had this experience, which I think is very rare for an American. I watched a movie in Hindi in a Bollywood movie theater when I was in India with no subtitles. I was more or less able to follow it. We all were. We yeah. all were. I watched no, it with I mean, the whole group. Well, like, done, you, you can. If, if, well, if the, if the beats are obvious enough, like there are certain things you might not get, but the overall plot, we were able to figure that out. Well, yeah, no, film is a visual medium. You should be able to more or less follow it if it's if it's a visually you know centric film. Yeah, you should be able to more or less right. do it. But let's hear Adam on CNN because there is obviously a labor element to this. Whether the writers are any good or not, they certainly don't deserve to starve. There was a writer, it's mentioned in that Rolling Stone article, I don't recall. I was planning on reading it to you all, but they fucked us. Um, there was a writer whose show won an Emmy award for like best writing in a TV series or something. The writer who won the award had a negative bank balance at the time right. he won at the, the Emmy award they won it, because right. they can't keep up with rent. Because if you don't get good residuals, then it is just like gig work. You're basically an Uber driver at that point. If you're not making enough money on the residuals of the thing, then you just go from gig to gig to gig. That's why a lot of actors don't retire. Because there is no retirement plan. There's no 401k. You're a contractor. You know, I mean, like, that's that's the hustle. You just got to kind of keep going. You know, very few actors, even SAG, I think only 9% of SAG uh, members actually qualify to get health insurance through SAG because you have to earn a certain amount of money before yeah, you right. can before that kicks in. And 9 out of 10 actors in their own union don't even get health insurance out of the union, right? So let's right. hear Adam uh, talk about the disparity between the tv executives and the writers he does this to cnn calling out the ceo of their own parent company interested that say look times are changing we are not making as much money as we once did this is not the golden era uh, of television although some of us would argue the shows are great um what do you say to them so I'd point out the fact that David Zaslav, the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, which is you know the parent company of the network I'm talking to you on right now, was paid $250 million last year, a quarter of a billion dollars. That's about the same level as what 10,000 writers are asking him to pay all of us collectively, all right? So 
I would say if you're being paid $250 million, Ted Sarandos made about $50 million last year. Uh, these companies are making enormous amounts of money. Their profits are going up. It's ridiculous for them to plead poverty when the writers who are making their shows, some of them are not able to pay their rent or their mortgages. I literally know writers who have had to go on assistance uh, because they have not been able to make their year. Uh, the, the, if, you, <laughs> if you look at these companies, they're making more money than ever. It's the people who make the shows for them that are making less. Adam Conover, thank you so much for coming on because you ruined everything. You may have just ruined my career, but I don't mind. Uh, appreciate you coming on. Yeah, so talk about a CEO to worker pay gap. You're talking about a CEO there making literally 11,000 times what the average writer took in in, sure. that, in that year, in the past sure. year. Sure, sure. It's a problem of capitalism, and these writers are correct that it is their plight does reflect what's happening across the economy where corporations are figuring out how to extract maximum wealth. And that is why I'm saying really these guys are the weavers protesting textile mills because in the end, these guys will cut your throat for a dollar. That's Hollywood. Please clap.